Hi everyone, I'm Meghna, founder of Let's Curate, a curator platform that celebrates and empowers independent artisans. Welcome to another episode of our webcast series. As you know, I'm always on the lookout for unusual creators and today's guest completely fits the bill. Shilpa Shankar Narain is a visual artist, illustrator, trained classical vocalist, but most importantly, she's an inquirer into the idea of divinity. Armed with an advanced education in Indian philosophy, her focus in fine arts and music has led her to do a deep dive in ancient classical aesthetics. Shilpa, I could go on, but let me just talk and say a big, big welcome to our platform. I'm so looking forward to this discussion. Thank you so much, Meghna. And I've been an admirer of all the stuff that you've been featuring all this while. And I wish I could get my hands on it, <laughs> some of that. So, yeah. Thank you so, so much. To, wonderful to meet you today. Yeah. It's, 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 the feeling is absolutely mutual. This is, the, this is the beauty of this platform. It gives me an insight and an entry into, uh, you know, the minds and homes of uh, people who are creating art on a daily basis. So I want to tell our viewers that um, a little bit about yourself. So your life journey has been pretty interesting. You have lived around the world for almost two decades, but you have such a deep connection to India by means of your you know, education in Indian philosophy and Indian classical music, which is a double whammy. I'm keen to know your core areas of interest and influences as you approach your art currently, because you've gone through an entire process over many, many years. Has it changed over the years? Has it solidified in some manner? Would love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, thank, that, that's an amazing question, actually. Uh, you know, Meghna, I've, I've seen, I keep reading about artists. They're inspired by their childhood. They're inspired by memories, stories their grandmothers told them. And most artists draw from their lives to express, you know, their innermost uh, feelings. And when I analyzed that, I saw that most of them were trying to hold on to something, you know, so that they would not lose touch or they would not lose it as it as a whole. And I realized that for me, it's exactly that. So, of course, my life took me through education, music. My father was a musician. So uh, it was very natural for the children mm -hmm. to take, take on to it in a very natural way. So music for me is a staple. I have to do music. Otherwise, uh, my day is not complete, right? So some things become a part of your life in such a big way. Uh, and then eventually, uh, through life's up and downs, you know, you try to hold on to what's most valuable. And for me, because I was traveling around the world, you know, my roots became the most valuable thing for me. And I went back to them again and again. So... I keep telling, you know, kids and youngsters who I meet that nothing is a waste, you know. I did my dancing and it was classical dance. I never took it on as a career. I never became a performing artist, even though I performed a lot. But uh, it, it was not a waste. It keeps adding to my understanding of art, even today. You know, the postures, when I look at sculpture, the postures, every little bit, it just rings a bell because somewhere in the mind it stays. So I'm hanging on to those roots, which are like, I don't know how many years old, like 20, 30 years old. And they just come back like pictures, like video images in front of my eyes. And I don't have a single regret, you know. I don't regret that I stopped dancing or I stopped something. It just, it's there. I haven't lost it. And it's there because of this art, right? Now, over the years, you know, I lost my father. Then a few years later, I lost my mother. And through all this, I'm holding on to them. So like every year I do, you know, around the, there's a festival in India. It's called Navratra, the nine days of Devi. So I do a series every year in which I do one artwork in a day. That's a challenge to me as an artist. But, you know, it goes back to my memories of my mother because my mother was a Bengali and it goes back everything that I'm doing now is connected and there are connections everywhere so it's because of this art that I'm able to thrive on those connections right I'm actually breathing living those connections thanks to this practice and that's why I'm so grateful for it it has evolved 
no doubt about it it has evolved so originally i was uh, doing it as a profession like i was a graphic designer i used to do uh, and i was very lucky that i got my hands on some very artistic projects so i have one here to show you right now this is a poster i did uh, many years back okay and it's by javed akhtar's poetry was being recited and so you know a normal commercial poster would not do for this mm -hmm. and so i got to flex my muscles even when i was doing commercial work and at all times i was drawing from all my learning so yeah so you know that's what i i feel that everything adds up and everything uh, contributes at all times to the next step and i am i am a living example of that i can tell you literally every project i do today it's coming from somewhere and i know where it's coming from but it adds and it multiplies and it generates its own life and that life channelizes itself through the expression and you know that's what i do today that's so, so wonderful yeah. shilpa you know the from i think I, everything that you said resonated so much with me especially the fact where you said that nothing is a waste i believe that so deeply myself um i feel like sometimes there is this culture now where you're always playing catch up you're always trying to create one um, uh, you know one fantastic memory after another and you're just kind of building it up and not really staying in and steeping yourself into something and i feel uh, especially i have two kids too and I, i i i tell this to my kids also that you know what just because something didn't work out the way you had manifested it in your mind it will come back to you at some point in your life this life is long you know life is <laughs> right. you know you don't yeah. have to accomplish everything right now you yeah. have to live your life for it right. to add to your you know the fabric of your being as such yeah. so i'm yeah. so i'm so happy and for emerging artists also when you when you think of it in terms of when you put it in the perspective of art for emerging younger people who are attempting art for the first time um i also feel there is undue pressure on them self imposed or otherwise where there is this need mm. to have an achievement as soon as you begin um and i don't think you know the uh, the classics or the masters of the past work like that they work because no. they compare from inside to create um the focus was not on how many things can i complete before the age of 30 or before the age of, you've not actually lived your you know even half your life before the age of 30 so <laughs> i that what you said really you know like hit me hard because i i truly believe that and it, it can be easily translated to um an artist perspective too which is even more remarkable but you know i have to i must uh, uh, i have to say something because this is so important you know these ancient temples that are now heritage sites and mm -hmm. we are wondering oh how did they do this and all that i read an article once that there was one king who went and studied the sculpture techniques of another kingdom mm -hmm. and this is documented the cholas and the uh, uh, hoysalas and what happened was that he studied it he came back and he taught it to his priest that temple was made over 300 years Wow. obviously the guy did not live for 300 years right correct so the idea was never to finish the job the idea was to carry it forward right so he taught the priest now in case the the king dies the priest uh, the the successor takes on that position even in terms of completing projects like this wonderful and when the priest if the priest dies then he has already taught that his job is to make sure that there is somebody who can succeed him to complete this work so over 300 years how are these things made and do you see the value in them they are continuing for thousands of years and we are still finding value in something so so there is a there is a direct relation in uh, in the fact that he could have just said you know finish it and i want to complete it in my lifetime i want to see it completed it was never about that it was always about investing in something it was always about taking it forward and believing in what you're doing and knowing that there is value in it there was huge faith there was a vision and there was something special which told him that there is value in it take it forward it doesn't matter who completes it but you have to do it so he started it 
was completed in 300 years right that is amazing <laughs> also it's such an evolved it's such an evolved way of thinking right exactly. you're not you're not uh, like you said there is no timeline it 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 go- grows and builds right. that you know i'm sure the priest put in his own you know his own perspective yeah. a little bit based right. on the way he understood what exactly. was taught to him and it moved ahead um and that is the essence of art it's not you know it's every person's you put a little bit of yourself and that's how yeah. the art piece becomes unique so that's i i think this is such an important lesson i we kicked off this discussion on yeah. an amazing note i'm so and excited especially this. especially at this time when you know you are lo- looking at uh, what am i going to update on instagram today what's going to be my update today so people are driven then i'm seeing their lives are driven by daily updates and it scares me because oh my god what next yeah you know so i i'm so i am i find so much solace in this this world which has really gone by it's it's god god knows where it it existed so the fact that it, the fact that it actually existed that people like this existed and their thought process was alive at some point on the same earth uh, it gives me a lot of peace and i really want to just keep on having at least some touch of that because it keeps me grounded it it keeps me uh, alive and happy otherwise you know i would just go into some depressing corner of the world you know? so yeah. what's the kind of work that you are involved in currently and your you know your overall point of view of when it comes to what you want to offer the world uh, when it comes to your art so uh, yeah um, you see the thing for me has always been because i have been so entrenched in uh, so for example dance and art and music and my father and a lot of cultural influences that for me you see what's happened is that the the fact of beauty is so we can see the absurdity of behind it so i have really gone to that point where my art is actually an intellectual pursuit it's not a pursuit of beauty as such mm-hmm. right uh, i don't want my work to be uh, you know the best example i have for this is uh, the difference between music and muzak the muzak that goes on in restaurants and lifts and then there is music where people actually come and concentrate and receive something and mo- get moved by it and they go home with a memory right i want my artist my art to be like that music i don't want it to be hanging on a wall and just mm-hmm. people pass by and they don't even notice you know what i'm trying to say so firstly my art is uh, derived from an intellectual pursuit right like you said i i am pursuing the idea of divinity i'm pursuing the the ancient mind actually right because i think it was very evolved i think at some point maybe if not in my lifetime but in later we will be bringing back some of those practices and processes to make our lives better mm-hmm. and i i do believe that and so i am trying to so my art is going to contribute at some point i'm hoping to that consciousness that we need to bring such certain things back we need to bring certain processes certain thought processes back i'm not talking of beliefs i'm not talking of religion i'm not talking of faith i'm talking of actual scientific processes i'm talking of internal processes because you see human beings have evolved and today our dependence on electronics and everything there's a lot of studies going on which say that our internal processes have changed mm-hmm. so they will change again and when they change again for the better that's my hope we will need the help of those original processes right and so my uh, art is the uh, the pursuit of you know a con- uh, a collective consciousness that existed at certain time and it is very very intellectually driven because you know uh, it's a very uh, it's it's an understood fact that when the intellect forgets and the memory also forgets so i'm trying to bring the intellect to remember certain things so that the memory also remembers same things right so 
so that's the thing so now for example i study i have recently picked up uh, i'm studying form of you know like indian classical dance and music they are still living arts but sculpture for example nobody teaches classical sculpture isn't it so yeah. i'm i'm trying to study some forms i'm trying to study it was very scientific there's huge studies have happened where there were exact angles that people have found behind sculptures in elora and all of that is actual diagrams which have been made so it was scientific but somehow nobody is practicing it mm-hmm. maybe people are but i mean look at the amount of classical dance and performances that are happening so in terms of volume where do we see those classical arts right so i want to work on that the idea of classical arts so currently for example i am i did uh, this thing of uh, you know it's from a sculpture bronze sculpture mm-hmm. the idea was to understand you know when you recreate something like this you know when when you learn painting you are asked to copy the masters so i'm trying to do something like that mm-hmm. trying to copy the masters when it comes to form and angle and posture right so when i make it i am wondering oh my god and doing this in bronze it's it's just mind boggling right so we are i'm just drawing it and i'm realizing that you know look at the angles and look at this and look at that and then so similarly i'm trying to put color into stuff so this is uh, my shashu mardini from bihar it's mm-hmm. a sculpture so you see the angles again i don't think i've done a good job copying it but there's just certain levels and all of that so once once you get into exploring these angles and the posture and everything that's when you realize that when it is etched in sculpture it's a it's a meditation which has precipitated through an artist and it has been brought to you so it's i'm practicing that when i do this when i when i'm recreating this the practice is to meditate and precipitate an idea or a form and then bring it to your audience right so that has that is that's consistent in all my artwork in any case so what's consistent is that there are certain uh, universal images and some ideas and form and i'm trying to precipitate channelize it and give it an expression through my art form so that's and that's the same thing i do with my music so classical indian music is exactly that there are universal raga structures and stuff mm-hmm. and then you through your own creativity you're channelizing the universality into your individuality and then bringing it to an expression so i'm doing exactly the same thing in interdisciplinary fashion one through music and one through the art the idea is the same so my my thesis is that channelizing the universal to the particular but yeah. i'm doing it through processes yeah that is that is incredibly interesting you know this is a um i feel this is why i like having conversations with creators because and i want you know uh, i want viewers and listeners to kind of have a deep dive into your mind and i'm i'm so grateful that you're kind of explaining the process in a manner which you know it makes you see your work when we see your work in a completely different light it's exactly like you say when you don't know anything about the artist and you just see a piece of art yes you derive something of your own uh, when you look at it but when you also know the artist perspective it's a beautiful i would say a beautiful combination where you get her or his perspective and your perspective and it just makes you look at it in a completely different light um you know an exciting new project of yours is getting completed very soon i'm i'm so thrilled to have the honor to talk about it uh um so shilpa is collaborating with an indian writer on a book based on her art series called water's net shilpa please tell us about it um, actually i have i call it my life's project it's called water's myth and it's basically uh, a collective civilization memory Uh, basically a uh, art a visual art that is based on myths and stories because every culture has myths and stories but why they are important is because they are like a documentation of a thought process they are not photographs they are not video 
uh, images they are actually they're not you know when we when people look at temples and they say oh that's how life used to be on those times it's not true it's actually the uh, it's a mental it's a meditation which people have been at certain levels in those times that they have been able to convey certain ideas in such simple ways like stories for people to understand so there is uh, there are layers and layers of understanding behind that so water's myth is a project which talks of mythology a visual artist's inquiry into the mythology of indian ancient india but the common thread is water so the element of water is the cent is the hero of this project because water comes up as a concept it comes up as a metaphysical concept in indian mythology it comes up as a uh, as a god it comes up as divinity it comes up as a river it comes up as a lake as a so it keeps changing form mm -hmm. and that's the idea of water right it's so malleable it wherever it goes it takes that form right. so they have taken the concept of the element of water and it transcends through these stories it's so amazing you know when i when i look at my own work i realize that what was going on in those minds right i mean they are able to just immediately transform water from a cosmic consciousness mm -hmm. to just a river you know the metamorphosis is fantastic so i am i'm trying to dissect that i am trying to go into those layers so in some stories it's a woman as water as a river in some stories it's time the depth the deep waters of time time is represented by water you know a life is represented by water journeys are represented by water so water is the medium of storytelling in all these stories so for me also water is the hero of water's myth and what we are doing there is that there is water's myth the story there is a visual and what i have done is that i have written a small description based on how i see the story mm -hmm. as an artist and then uh, my friend who i'm collaborating with she's writing the the larger narrative the 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 bigger narrative of how these stories fit into the indian psyche and and the world idea because every every culture has mythology and we need to go into so as a process we want to document it and that's what the book does it's documenting the process of why we should look at mythology and why we should look at collective consciousness and the memories stored in mythology and learn from them and also value them for there's so much intensity in it we are actually losing track of that and we are looking at it as a completely different we are distorting the idea of mythology into religion and i don't agree with this so the reason why i'm doing this is to refute religion and religious beliefs which are blind religious beliefs mm -hmm. if you really believe in something show me how it works right so i'm going into that and i'm refuting religion using these basic concepts which actually make up religion also that's amazing. right so so that's the idea of water's myth and water's myth is an inquiry into uh, you know it's it's a, it's deeply embedded in the indian classical arts the processes are derived from the indian classical arts where uh, we are also talking about scriptures every artwork has a scriptural text which is attached to it so you know the scriptural text and what happens is that it informs us of the possibilities of human kind as a whole and that's when we realize that it's showing us a certain direction so when it is when it is supported by multiple things like visuals scriptures thought stories it becomes a more concrete uh, idea so i'm trying to create uh, more than art here i'm trying to contribute to the indic renaissance where people are going back to indic ideas and realizing that there was so much value in it so i think in the visual field there has not been much work done in that so what is myth is a contribution to the indic renaissance that is i mean i feel like contribution is a very small word for what you're attempting to do because i feel like it's almost like 
you're adding to the legacy uh, that was left behind, and that is that is a huge undertaking. So I'm, I, you know, I, I completely understand how you say it's like your life's work because you, you know, one lifetime I feel is not yeah. enough to kind of you know encapsulate yeah, all know. of what you're trying to achieve. <laughs> Just, so that, yeah, that's a huge. Yeah. Uh, I mean, kudos to you for you know even kind of going there because we do need this. Like you're saying, uh, we don't want to lose this. Um, most people don't realize, you know, even during the pandemic or even before the pandemic, art is a in 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 any form. It's not necessarily fine arts or you know, art comes to us on a daily basis um, in unexpected ways. We don't even realize we are absorbing it, and this yeah. is really uh, going to add to the literature uh, for for future generations. So I'm so I'm so excited and so enthralled about your you know about your objective. I hope so. Your, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I'm sure it will. So. It will. I mean, I cannot. The reach I feel is going to be just beyond what you're thinking right now, and that's. Uh, and that's, what, really... that's the thing, you know. I have um, uh, the prints of the book with me, and uh, we have, you know, we are we are trying to do this. So mm -hmm. there is Devnagri script. There's okay. a title in Devnagri script. This is the story that I wrote mm -hmm. because this is my. This is how I see it. You know, mythology is not a single concrete, uh, just written in stone, right? Mythology is for all of us to to make our own derivations from it. Correct. So this is my 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 story, which I'll I'll read out to you for maybe if if we have the time, and then this is the scripture which supports it, right? And then we also have the the source of the scripture right here. So we are creating a, a very solid document, which which is not just a, 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 an artist's fancy. That oh, this is what they meant, or oh, this is something that I'm dreaming of, and that's why it should be true. It it's it's really an inquiry into ideas, consciousness, with layers and layers of understanding, layers and layers of actual realization. Mm -hmm. I want to tap into that realization. You know, I'm I really want to travel to that time and tap into that realization. So I'm hoping that this is this this project. It actually has helped me with the. With at so many levels and my experiences are amazing with every artwork so yeah so <laughs> we'll, we'll probably talk about it when the book is out <laughs> absolutely i was just about to say that that sounds i mean yeah. that seems to be like a very organic uh, next step for for me as you know someone who's also deeply interested in this and of course for you as the one who's created it Shilpa, I believe you have one of the artworks from Water Smith called The Descent ready to show us. We would love for you to present and elaborate on this work. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, this is the artwork. It's called The Descent. And um, uh, all the Water Smith is digital art. Mm -hmm. So I have printed it in this A3 plus size because uh, it becomes accessible like this. But I've also printed uh, some of the artworks in this big size, like you see there. I am my, actually my idea is to do projection experiences from them, but that's the, uh, uh, what digital art allows me. So in every art piece, all of the watersmith, the process is that I do hand sketching of the parts. Right, so this is different. Mm -hmm. This has been sketched separately, right? This has been sketched separately, mm -hmm. and then this has been done separately, and then I put them together in a composition. So that's how most illustrators who work in the digital digital medium work. And the story behind this is, uh, sorry, that what I also do, like I showed you earlier, is that I write my own story. This is a very popular tale of how uh, the river Ganga was asked to come on earth. And because it was so powerful, uh, Shiva came and the gods requested him that you are the only person that can bear her strength. Otherwise, the earth will tear, you know, burst into pieces. So he was the only person who could bear the, who had the internal and external strength to bear that wrath of the river. So he was asked to take it in his head. And that's where he, brought, uh, he broke its fall 
and then it came down on her and it cleansed uh, of the sins of one uh, somebody so that's the story but what i also do is i write my own story mm -hmm. so i'm going to read it out to you quickly ganga in the heavens is invoked to descend onto earth she holds within herself the giant waves of time timelessness existence and death in the three worlds coexisting pushing her way over it her pristine waters move towards the earth in a large white wave the pindas of the deceased ancestors of bhagirath wait patiently on the river bed for mukti the earth turns deep red with the blood and pains of the undead lying in wait the raging river decides to descend to bear her wrath stands shiva the yogi the ascetic matted hair flying ready to break the fall of her heavenly waters shiva the light shiva the eternal shiva the adi madha ant the only one who could bear the descent of the mighty ganga cleanses the earth of its karma the scripture that i have used here it comes from the vishwanath ashtakam by adi shankaracharya it is called uh, it reads like that ganga tarang ramaniya jata kalapam which means the, the one who took the flow of the river in his hair so like i described there's a lot of symbolism that's happening here so for example these lines with the dots this is time and timelessness so there's threads of time then there are waves then there are worlds even within the river there are worlds where there is a little lotus that's coming out and then there's the clouds and then the giant wave that decides to descend on the matted hair of shiva then these are the the red earth that i've described here i've tried to you know bring that also into the picture so literally everything here has been hand i mean it has been hand drawn but there's a thought in every every little line that i've put here so it's not just arbitrary you know filling up of spaces so there are sh there are layers and layers of understanding which we are trying to show and then the fact that it exists in that realm within those layers if you don't look at this wave it might as well have existed in that in in the sky so the wave is a conscious attempt of the river to descend so we are i'm trying to show that that without this wave it is comfortable there the wave is it's like a step forward we take that one step so the river decides to take that step forward and step on to the matted hair so there's there's life in every concept you know that the, our ancestors thought of so so this is this is i mean this is how i would describe it but i know that a lot of people who know about the story they see small small things and they find so much meaning in and sometimes they say oh my god you've used it like this you know we read somewhere that that's exactly how it should be and i'm so shocked that okay i didn't do that deliberately but i mean people are find they find meaning and they're finding understanding and they get attached to it because they find the meaning in it so it's very exciting for me when uh, layers and layers of understanding are added to a basic artwork so when you so all of these uh, see, this whole series is available on my website mm -hmm. in three different sizes so what i have done is there is a small size because we are all constrained for space and then we have i have a bigger size which is just a print and then i'm also doing a series with gold layers on it so that's going to be a unique one time series so all the artworks i'm getting in a bigger size printed on museum etchings paper which is very high quality uh, archival paper mm -hmm. and then i do a, a few layers of hand work on it with watercolors and acrylic uh, gold and silver paints so that adds another layer of understanding so it's not just outlining and all it's another layer of artwork mm -hmm. which so that's what makes that digital print a unique work of art so it's a limited edition and it's available on my website and every time i sell one of the pieces it also goes with a story with the story which i because everybody i know is inter is interested in my story 
they know the story most indians know these stories mm-hmm. but they are interested in my story what are you what is your story can you can we get a print of it so i i, I give a very nice you know a, a laid out uh, a, i mean i it comes naturally to me i've been a commercial graphic artist so i have to do everything in <laughs> in a right. good presentable form so everything comes with with the story printed so what people do is that they frame it and then they put the story at the back okay so they can access the story whenever they want this yeah. is an incredible incredible piece of work shilpa and i cannot wait for water's myth in its entirety when it's completed i mean i think just based on this one piece of work that you've shown me from the entire series that you work on um i'm sure the end result is going to be stunning and just an important addition to the legacy of indian mythology and divinity as you know as your life's work uh, you know that's like your foundation hope, yeah. for your life's work um, yeah, i, I have no doubt you know <laughs> success on your terms lies ahead for you shilpa and i'm so grateful that you gave me the opportunity to kind of explore your mind as an artist because that is my objective uh, for my viewers and listeners to get a sense of where all this comes from it's not the process the thought the inspiration um and i'm so happy you gave us your time today to kind of delve allow us to delve into your mind so we're I'm so actually grateful. very great i am grateful to you because not many people are interested you know to hear what we have to say as artists they are just interested in the product we are such a consumeristic <laughs> race right we are just interested in the product and so people are like oh my god this looks fabulous <laughs> but very few people really want to know how did i do that so uh, this is this is a, an ongoing conversation i'm sure yes. this is the first of many um and you know i want our viewers and listeners to just know that you know this is going to be a dialogue with shilpa and me for you know many many months years you know as time goes by we just be awesome, on this yeah. uh, on this conversation which is i feel is um just an important dialogue for people also to understand and be aware um of the legacy that you're trying to build so um as i said we always post our webcasts on our youtube channel and social media channels so stay tuned Uh, and for more updates of course follow us on instagram at let's underscore curate shilpa once again thank you so much have a wonderful day